Well, I've managed to plot a Europa encounter that gets us an Io encounter, but the net effect of burning this 16 meters per second is basically to return us to the same orbit. The green line is after the Europa encounter, and then the resulting blue line is basically close to our current orbit, and that's after the Io encounter. So I'm not too sure that this is all beneficial at all. I mean, scenic, but not beneficial. I also tried plotting a maneuver that would just bring our orbit directly to the orbit of Io on the periapsis side, and that costs about 330 meters per second, so that's doable with our current nuclear stage. Um, I wonder if Mechjeb would condescend to give me the... See, I mean, it only reads 1,176 meters per second in the, in the station itself, though I thought it had more than that. But then again, we might have used some of that uh, on RCS burns, but I think it has more than that, but I'm not sure. So we'll have to see about that. 1,000 is not going to be enough to make orbit around anything, that's for sure. But certainly raising our orbit to Io's orbit is probably the thing to do. I don't think we're going to get too much help from some of the other moons, but I'll keep trying for a little bit. All right, well, this is somewhat insane, but uh, here we go. 43 meters per second, we pass by Callisto first in 29 days at a height of 3,000 kilometers and that boosts our orbit instead of bringing it down. We're trying to bring it down, but our, it boosts our orbit so that our periapsis gets boosted as well. Remember it took 300 meters per second to get it from here to Io's orbit and it's boosting orbit there. And then we also have a Ganymede encounter there. But that's a very loose Ganymede encounter in 43 days that is at 8,580 kilometers. Uh, the net effect of all this is also to flatten our orbit with respect to Io. You can see the ascending node there, 0.1 degree, and that'll be good enough. And that's close enough to uh, the periapsis as well, so that all works out. So I guess we'll do this. Um, Callisto and Ganymede getting into the act this time. Wait, wait, what? Something has changed completely. Hold that thought. Whoa! It, it, it just changed everything on me. I don't know if you saw that. Man, you can't be doing that sort of thing. What, what just happened? Was there a moon nearby? I was not apprised of any such situation. I had such a nice plot. And what did it do? It took it away from me. It totally took it away from me. It looks like that ain't gonna happen. Yeah, wow. I'll have to review the video to figure out what happened there, but... No more Ganymede, uh, Callisto Ganymede thing. Alright, well I reviewed the video and I still have no idea what the heck went on. We didn't really have an encounter with any moon that I could see. The Ganymede situation was a bit complicated, but it still said that it was in 40 odd days. And so we probably shouldn't have been flying by that. But anyway, it did toss, it, toss us into a lower orbit, so it wasn't horrible. It's not like it flung us out of the system or anything. And I'm just gonna bite the bullet and go ahead and burn the 300 meters per second to lift our orbit up here to get this Io encounter. That brings our apoapsis below Callisto's orbit. And no more Callisto encounter for us. After our last experience, probably for the best. Well, this will pretty much be the end of this stage. It's done quite a lot of work getting us all these encounters. It might end up getting some accidental encounters with Io and getting flung all over the place later on once we've departed it. We're actually increasing our relative inclination to make sure that we meet up with Io properly, but it's not the best thing. Well, that's actually pretty bad, to be honest. I didn't realize that we were increasing our inclination by that much. And it's still finicky about the whole encounter thing. Well, whatever the map view says, we're definitely encountering Io. At the prescribed altitude. And once we pass it, we'll ditch the tug at this point. I don't know if I should bring the other tug in, probably. But I don't know what it's going to take to do that. 
Okay. Undock. 1,755 here. Well, 17 meters per second for a new encounter and that'll bring our orbit down. I hope it flattens us out a little bit. Uh, it's flickering. So hard to get good orbits these days. Okay, now in 29 days we're gonna spend quite a bit of Delta V381 to just correct our inclination with it completely. I should have done that earlier, really. Um, I was messing around with the inclination in order to get encounters, but now that we're trying to actually hit it uh, over here somewhere next, we really need to clear that up. And uh, we've got periapsis there and it brings our orbit down, but still got a lot of work to do. All right, hopefully we can get it settled. And then, uh, well, let's see what's going on here. Well, there's an encounter, but I think we're crashing into it. Okay, 50, well, 68 kilometers sounds good. And that brings our orbit down as promised. Okay, let's pass by it again. Uh, time warped a little bit too quickly for it to be scenic. But darn it, it left us with 0.5 degree inclination. Darn it, IO. All right, next burn, 94.3 meters per second, encountering IO and the tangential sort of well, not tangential, a sort of incidental encounter with Europa that we really don't want, and it's fine, but we're not going to do anything with it, I don't think. But I had to do a double plot so that we could actually see the encounters. It's complicated now. Very complicated. It seems to indicate we have an encounter after an orbit, but currently we're crashing into Io. I guess we'll have to wait to correct that. Let's just go around. I don't know if we're encountering Europa, actually. It's all a mystery. Oh, it won't let me make a maneuver node. Well, at least on the blue orbit. On the purple orbit, it's fine. But maybe I can just do a little bit of RCS to lift it up. I saw a double encounter there, but... Um, that's on the wrong side. It's nice though. Can we manage 46 kilometers and still be safe? If we can, then we can make use of that double encounter. So, okay, we'll go with this. Let's encounter IO and Europa. Yes, we're going to get Europa as a bonus. And then another IO. We're still not quite at IO periapsis up here. And these orbits seem to bring us in rather than out. Okay, where's Io? Oh, we're, we're passing by really fast. I can't see it. It's dark. And this is our closest pass yet. Ambient light will happen. There we go. So let's see, what can we do here to really help ourselves out? Not in three days. I want to do that now, please. Okay, at least it'll make uh, make a maneuver for me. And really, I'm interested in what happens on the IO side. But we have to make sure that Europa does not get in the way of this. Well, that will result in a lower orbit at the end of it. I'm not even looking at Europa. It's too far away anyway. Oh, we passed by IO really quickly. All right. Well, let's get out to Jupiter space. And our apoapsis is now pretty close to Europa's orbit. 
periapsis is still within IOS. 1.2 degree inclination. Horrible. Well, we have to pay attention to the Uranus ambassador, so I'm going to just create a dummy maneuver out there for the time being and delay it. We're not doing anything useful here right now anyway. So let's just uh, take a look at the Uranus ambassador. It's probably got a long ways to periapsis around Uranus anyway, but we should take a look at it. So we'll have that jill port one alarm. We still got the other tug that could potentially do something, but it's tough for that tug to get down to where we're at right now. It's all the way up there. That's rough. So yeah, that might be just in reserve for something else. So here we are with the Uranus Ambassador probe in interplanetary space and I've plotted a correction that does in fact get us a Neptune encounter. It really didn't want to show me a Neptune encounter, but I managed to wrestle it down and get one anyway, but it's a very, very tight sort of situation uh, because we're using Uranus's gravity to help us out and probably we're not going to get a quite what I have here because it's down to hundredths of a meter per second and all that. It's the influence of Uranus at work. I checked for a new Uranus flyby contract and we don't have one. Uh, so it doesn't matter that I'm raising my periapsis to 60,000 kilometers. Uh, normally the flyby contracts require 20,000, but we only have a Neptune and Pluto one. And the good thing is that our arrival at Neptune will be in 3 years and 194 days, which is well in time for the Neptune flyby contract. So that's excellent. So let's uh, get to this. Uh, just outside of Uranus SOI, we're going to do this maneuver and we'll have a Neptune probe. In fact, I think I'll rename it. All right, this should probably be done just with RCS. And so that's what we're doing. Awkwardly clipped Astros engines there. Well, heck, at least this probe is still mostly intact after seven years and 336 days. Quite a trip. It still has 3,000 meters per second, which is pretty good. All right, let's see what we've got. So 60,000 around Uranus as expected, and it's a little bit high around Neptune, but every little tap of the RCS changes it by a lot. So again, we're going to have to probably wait to get it exact. I'll try my best. Oh, uh, uh, 28,000. So we need to get a little bit closer than that, but not a whole lot closer. Let's take a look at what's going on over there. Um, let me, well, let's bring it into Uranus SOI first before we make any further plans. That's in six days before Jove Port 1 needs our attention again. Not needs. Um, actually, it doesn't need our attention at all. There's no contract being fulfilled by that. I need to remind myself, spending so much time on Jove Port 1. Okay, so Uranus periapsis in 37 days. We should do some science around here if we can. So, um, okay, that just jumped in a weird way. Let's add a maneuver and add that as an alarm. Okay, but let's see. What science do we have? We have four goo containers. Surely we can do one here. 32 science for just transmitting the goo. I'll, we'll do that. Yeah. How many things can we actually hit with this after all? Log radio plasma wave. Ooh, 117 science. Magnetometer scan, 65 science. Visual observations, 78 science. And uh, everything else now. So if I could select something, yeah. Um, analyze telemetry, 58.5. I forgot I didn't have all y'all in here. Perturbation data, 65. Oh, it's record impact data, 78. Temperature, 78. Radiation, 78. Barometer, 78. Okay, I think that's it. Lots of science, and we'll get more once we get closer to Uranus. 
I hope close to Uranus is 60,000 kilometers ish. We'll have to see. All right, but let's take a look at the situation at Neptune. We have another Uranus probe coming in, and there's this other Uranus flyby one as well. One of those could get into orbit around Uranus. We don't have to worry about that. It's more important to get the Neptune contract done. Okay, well, somewhere somewhere around will we'll be like this. And how much does it take to get into orbit? That's what I wanted to know. We've got 3,000. It feels like more than 3,000 just tugging it like this. Well, that's 9,000. It's because of all these slingshots, you know, Jupiter flyby and all this. We're going pretty fast when we get to Neptune. So no luck on the whole getting into orbit thing. But, uh, or maybe, I don't know if it's counting the influence of Uranus. Maybe after we pass Uranus, it'll be easy. No, I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it. I think, uh, I think it's a foregone conclusion that we're not stopping at Neptune. And it's just going to be flung out into interstellar space after this. As a Voyager should be. But it's a shame we're carrying all this Delta V and we can't use it for anything. Maybe after we pass by Uranus, we can adjust our orbit to get a flyby of Triton as well. That'd be nice. Okay, but for now, I mean, and we can't mess around with it too much because we really need to get close to Neptune to fulfill, fulfill the contract. Yeah, so if we can't get a Triton contract, uh, sorry, Triton flyby while fulfilling the contract, obviously we won't. But anyway, this one is well on its way to collecting much science. Let's go back to Jove Port 1. Okay, here's our next maneuver with Jove Port 1 in four days. Actually, two maneuvers. We have one here and then one here in our correct inclination. Uh, it's pretty expensive, but the orbit is looking nice. We're going to have a resulting orbit completely within the orbit of of Europa, though I take that back. This this periapsis is troubling. Um, it's uh, we we continually lift our periapsis only to have it drag us towards Jupiter again. It's very annoying. But anyway, this is promising at least. I don't know what it promises. We'll find out. Um, yeah, it's gonna be tight as far as our delta v is concerned after these two burns. Maybe we can have the, the um, what you call it, uh, Jovian Demon, the second Jovian Demon swoop in to help us out, but I don't know. I mean, on its own, the second Jovian Demon has plenty of Delta V, and it could do a lot of flybys too. Though, I'm getting a little bit tired of flybys, obviously, you might expect. So, I'm sure you're getting tired of flybys too. But, yeah, we'll try this out. I actually had a plot where it encountered Io, uh, no, it encountered Europa, then it encountered Io, then it encountered Europa again, and the result was it didn't change their orbit one bit. <laughs> so that was useless. Uh, fun though, that's uh, it's almost looking like the jewel system at this level. So yeah, anyway, here we go. Okay, so off to the side, I've taken care of the second Jovian demons periapsis, lifting it up so it matches the periapsis of Joveport 1. So we have a tangency and could potentially meet up, but the second Jovian demon is going to take a long time to get from where it is up there to down here anyway, uh, and it doesn't really have an encounter right now. So it's probably going to take a fair amount of time to phase with Joveport 1 if it can, ev if it can even help. It better be able to help though, because we only have 668 meters per second here at 9 tons. The good thing is that we have burned off fuel, so we're lighter. And once Jovi the Jovian Demon comes down here and can rendezvous, then maybe it'll have enough Delta V to give us a boost here and there. Uh, as far as how much Delta V it would take to get into orbit around Io after we make this pass, it's about 2,400, so we do not have enough but we could potentially make a few more maneuvers to uh, get um, you know more boosts with Io, we'll see. We're getting pretty close to Io's orbit though, so I don't know how much help it's gonna give us. But anyway, 17 hours until we meet up with it. Maybe we'll be able to make orbit without the second Jovian Demon's help, I don't know. But every time we pass by Io though, it, it brings our periapsis down, so 
That doesn't help much. That yeah, does not help much. And that's because we're meeting up with it over here instead of, you know, where we're, we ought to be over here. Anyway, you've seen Io before, right? Right? Yeah. If we do take the opportunity to lift our orbit, we're not going to have too much left to do anything else. So that had better result in an encounter. There's one. That's a good periapsis, but we only have 100 meters per second left after that. Can it actually get us into orbit? Whoa, that's a very uncertain situation right there. Um, yeah, I don't know where that maneuver went. Over there? It seems like 300 meters per second would do. Well, geez. That's close. Yeah, we're just a little bit short. But maybe maybe we can meet up with uh, the second Jove port and get this uh, in the second Jovian demon and get this done. Doesn't seem like we need too much of a boost. Just a little bit. We can pass by IO more than once. Let's do this one burn um, just to match our periapses and get that first encounter. It's going to cost a lot and it's not going to be much here left. Okay, well, the irony is this results in a really close orbit to IO's, but it's not close enough. It's uh, just a little bit off and we have just a tiny bit of delta V left after it. But I guess we'll take what we can get. Hopefully, I mean, only IO can mess us up at this altitude, so. That'll, that'll just be. IO will decide our fate. I wish I had lifted up the periapsis earlier instead of getting those other encounters, which were sort of oblique. It's so close. I mean, look at our resulting orbit compared to Io's. Or oh, there's a little bit of inclination, isn't there? 400 meters per second to capture. Well, so, I mean, we're just gonna go in there and go out again, as usual. Once again, close, but no cigar. 59 meters per second left. We're looking at you, Io. It's 15 more days until the second Jovian demon is even close to where we are. It needs to do an inclination adjustment to match ours. Well, this will be sort of a ridiculous burn, but here, here we've got another encounter, though it's a polar encounter. <laughs> uh, we got a relative inclination of one degree now. That's still 400 to capture, so it doesn't matter. We don't need to do that. Okay. Let's uh, pop on over to Jovian Demon and see what options we have. Because, really, it doesn't have enough to directly come down to this orbit. It'll need to pass by Io a few times all on its own to uh, figure it out. So, yeah, it's doing a maneuver there. And that'll flatten it with respect to Io. No longer will it flatten it out with respect to our mission, because the mission has a one degree inclination. Um, let's have, th uh, let's raise our orbit here a little bit more, even though that's not the best location to do it at. So there's an IO encounter that'll help us bring our orbit down a little bit. And that maneuver here will cost 500? Mmm, I don't like that. Okay, this one... We could get closer, but uh, this one will only cost 227. Still pretty bad, but it's a start. Okay, so we've got those, uh, we've got two maneuvers. One uh, in 50 days, one hours and 50 minutes. Another in 50 days, 23 hours. But first we need to pay attention to Uranus Ambassador. I hope 
I hope our Joe Fort one doesn't accidentally encounter Io and do something silly in the meantime. But you never know. It's a, it's a one in degree inclination difference, so probably not. But we'll find out. Anyway, to Uranus Ambassador, going to Neptune after a flyby of Uranus, and we'll actually be heading close to Uranus right now. In a way, the Jove Port 1 and Jovian Demon Madness is just giving us something to do while we, you know, wait for all this other stuff to come up because we've got some pretty substantial gaps there and it's best to be doing something. Doing fancy maneuvers to meet up with Io and everything, trying to get into orbit around Io. It's worthwhile. Okay, so that was just a dummy maneuver. We just want to pay attention. Oh, that's in 16 days that the periapsis actually happens. Um, Alright, we'll pay attention to you later then. Okay, back to the second Jovian Demon then. It looks like Joport 1 is safely going away from Io. Will be a few rounds before it meets up with it again. Okay, ignition. Well, that's a uh, not so subtle difference, okay. So possibly we can do better than that, but that's a start. Okay, 21 hours, just ahead of the Uranus Ambassador reaching Uranus. Uh, our orbit is still a little bit short and it's still hitting Io a little bit obliquely. It's, it's not great. Okay, 212 kilometers will be alright and that's a pretty good drop in our apoapsis so we will have to take that and that looks like it's in 51 days. That takes a while, huh? Okay. We will add that alarm. And throughout all of it, we're going to have to keep an eye on what Joeport 1 is doing, because at any time it might re-encounter IO and get flung off, so we got to keep it, in, keep it in mind. And anyway, but that's still 51 days. Oh wait, that's the wrong way around, isn't it? This is our current orbit. That's what's going to happen. Oops. Wrong side of IO. Okay, that's the right way around. Okay, now we can go to Uranus Ambassador. All right, let's get rid of that alarm and that maneuver. And now for the coup de grace, the piece de la resistance of the episode, our flyby of Uranus. And afterwards we'll rename this. Let's see if we can get some new visual observations. No, of course not, because it's high over. Um, magnetometer, no, probably not. Yeah, still high over. RPWS. No, nope, just high over. Okay, so let's wait until we're low over. Hopefully soon, because, well, we're not getting that close to it. It's very blue. Okay, let's see. Observe bio sample. Okay, near. It is near. All right. Well, transmit one of those biosamples. 45 science. Visual observations. 108 science. Equatorial bands. Well, we might be stuck near the equatorial bands this time because, oh, the service info doesn't have the biomes. Mm. Landing? Landing has biomes. Okay. Because we're going to be pretty equatorial, you know. 90 science, 162 science for RPWS, so analyze telemetry, 81 science, pressure data, 108, radiation data, 108, temperature, 108, we'll have warp drives in no time at this rate. Record impact data, 108. Perturbation data, 90, only 90. Okay, so let's see if we get to a different biome. I mean, I don't know if there are biomes on Uranus. It's pretty plain. 
let me just see what altitude uh, near over Venus, uh, sorry, Uranus counts as. It's still near, okay. And how about 100,000? Uh, at 100,000 kilometers it's high over and that means we don't have anything else to do here so it is officially out on its way out of uh, Uranus SOI and on its way to Neptune it has that encounter we'll have a mid-course adjustment here and that'll just uh, be a tiny little adjustment to get it closer to Neptune That'll do the trick, but we, we might as well get real close, right? We could adjust the inclination and try and hit Triton. Let's see. Well, I'm not seeing any indication that we're going to hit anywhere close to Triton. So that doesn't look like it's going to happen. And let's double check orbit now that we've passed by Uranus. Okay, so that would be orbit. 6,600. Well, it's not as bad as I thought it was, but it's still not good enough. And the reason we can't quite hit Triton is because of where the nodes are. Let's see if we can do something about that. Oh, mm, let's overdo this burn. Well, that didn't help at all. So we'll just swing by Neptune and there won't be a Triton component to it. Neptune's atmosphere is 1,250 kilometers. We've got a maneuver that'll get us to 1,793. Sounds good. It uh, looks like it's time to rename this. And so this will be... Don't range safety it. Neptune Ambassador. And we can add its maneuver. Okay, so we'll catch up with this in 588 days. And with this flyby of Uranus, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.